Welcome to Jeremy's IT Lab. This is a free complete course for the CCNA. If you like these videos, please subscribe to follow along with the series. Also, please like and leave a comment and share the video to help spread this free series of videos. Thanks for your help. In this video, we will cover two Cisco proprietary protocols, DTP, aka Dynamic Trunking Protocol, and VTP, VLAN Trunking Protocol. As I said, they are Cisco proprietary, meaning they were developed by Cisco and they only run on Cisco devices. DTP and VTP were removed from the CCNA exam topics list for the new exam, 200-301. However, it's important to know their function, and you may still get questions about them on the exam, even though they are not on the topics list. So what will we cover in this video? Well, I already said it. We will cover DTP, Dynamic Trunking Protocol first. DTP is a Cisco proprietary protocol that allows switches to negotiate the status of their switch ports to be either access ports or trunk ports without manually configuring them. Then we will cover VTP, VLAN Trunking Protocol. VTP is another Cisco proprietary protocol that allows you to configure VLANs on a central switch, which then acts as a server that other switches can synchronize to so you don't have to configure VLANs on every single switch in the network. Also, make sure you watch until the end of today's quiz, as I will once again feature a question from XSIM for CCNA by Boson Software. XSIM for CCNA is Boson's set of practice exams for the CCNA, and they are widely regarded as the best practice exams to get you ready for the real thing. I use them myself for my CCNA and CCNP. If you want to get a copy of XSIM, Follow the link in the video description. Let's go over some points about DTP. DTP is a Cisco proprietary protocol that allows Cisco switches to dynamically determine their interface status, access or trunk, without manual configuration. Basically, two Cisco switches connected together can form a trunk, but otherwise the interface will automatically be an access port. DTP is enabled by default on all Cisco switch interfaces. Once again, because it is a proprietary protocol, this applies only to Cisco switches. So far, we have been manually configuring switch ports using either switch port mode access or switch port mode trunk. If we use DTP, we don't need to enter these commands. Now, for security purposes, manual configuration is recommended. DTP should be disabled on all switch ports. DTP can be exploited by attackers, and I'll talk more about network security later in this course. But for now, just know that it should be disabled on all interfaces. Let's go straight into the CLI. I'm in interface configuration mode here on a Cisco switch, and I entered switch port mode followed by the question mark. You can see the access and trunk options we used before. But the one we're going to look at now is this one, dynamic. It says, set trunking mode to dynamically negotiate access or trunk mode. That's DTP. So I entered dynamic and used the question mark again. There are two options, auto and desirable. The only description given is set trunking mode dynamic negotiation parameter to auto or desirable, which doesn't really explain their function. So let me explain each of these modes. A switch port in dynamic desirable mode will actively try to form a trunk with other Cisco switches. It will form a trunk if connected to another switch port in the following modes. Switch port mode trunk, switch port mode dynamic desirable, or switch port mode dynamic auto. Let's see how that works. Switch 1 and switch 2 are connected via their G00 interfaces. Switch 1's G00 interface is in dynamic desirable mode. Switch 2's G00 interface is manually configured as a trunk. So these two switches will both agree to operate as trunks. Here is a new command, show interfaces G00 switch port. These are just the first few lines of output. I will show you the others later. It says switch port enabled because it is a layer two port. If we want to configure a routed port with the no switch port command, this would display differently. The administrative mode is dynamic desirable. 
Administrative mode is what we actually configured on the interface. And then below it, Operational mode, displays whether it is a trunk or access port. Because Switch 2's interface is a trunk, Switch 1's interface became a trunk as well, thanks to DTP negotiation. Here on Switch 2, you can see that both the administrative mode and operational mode are trunk. Now both interfaces are configured in dynamic desirable mode. So they will both form a trunk. The output of show interfaces switch port is the same on Switch 1. And this time Switch 2 also has an administrative mode of dynamic desirable. But once again, the operational mode is trunk because both switches are actively using DTP to try to form a trunk. Even if manually configured as a trunk, an interface still sends DTP frames out of the interface. This time Switch 2's interface is configured in dynamic auto mode. A switch port in dynamic auto mode does not actively try to form a trunk. It's more passive. It will tell Switch 1, if you want to form a trunk, I'll form a trunk, but I'm not going to actively try to form a trunk with you. However, because Switch 1 is in dynamic desirable mode, once again a trunk will be formed. Switch 1's show interfaces switch port output is the same. And Switch 2's shows an administrative mode of dynamic auto, and again, an operational mode of trunk. One more example. Switch 2's interface is now manually configured as an access port with the switch port mode access command. Switch 1 is actively trying to form a trunk, but since Switch 2 is manually configured in access mode, the trunk will not form and both will operate as access ports in the default VLAN, which is VLAN 1. The output of Show Interfaces Switch Port on Switch 1 now shows an operational mode of static access. What does static access mean? Static access means an access port that belongs to a single VLAN that doesn't change, unless you configure a different VLAN. There are also dynamic access ports in which a server automatically assigns the VLAN depending on the MAC address of the connected device. But this is out of the scope of the CCNA. You don't need to learn about dynamic access ports. I just wanted to clarify what static access means. Now on Switch 2's G00 interface, both the administrative and operational modes are static access. Okay, now you've learned about dynamic desirable mode and seen that an interface in dynamic desirable mode will use DTP negotiation to form a trunk if the connected interface on the other device is in trunk, dynamic desirable, or dynamic auto mode. However, if the other interface is in access mode, it will not form a trunk. It will be an access port. Now let's look at dynamic auto mode. A switch port in dynamic auto mode will not actively try to form a trunk with other Cisco switches. However, it will form a trunk if the switch connected to it is actively trying to form a trunk. It will form a trunk with a switch port in the following modes. Switch port mode trunk, or switch port mode dynamic desirable. So, switch 1's G00 interface is configured in dynamic auto mode, and switch 2's is manually configured as a trunk. Therefore, DTP negotiation will cause them to form a trunk link. Here you can see the administrative mode of dynamic auto and operational mode of trunk, whereas on switch 2, both are trunk. Now we already saw what happens when a switch port in dynamic auto mode is connected to a switch port in dynamic desirable mode. They form a trunk. So let's look at two switch ports in dynamic auto mode. Neither is actively trying to form a trunk, so both operate as access ports in the default VLAN, VLAN 1. And they have the same output for the show interfaces switch port command, administrative mode of dynamic auto and operational mode of static access. Next up, dynamic auto and access mode. As you can probably guess, this will result in both interfaces operating as access ports. Here is the output of show interfaces switch port on each switch. Now you may wonder what happens if a manually configured trunk is connected to a manually configured access port. Well, since both are manually configured, they are forced to operate mismatched in trunk and access modes. Here is the output of show interfaces switch port for each. However, this configuration does not work. It should result in an error and traffic will not pass between these switches. Here's a chart summarizing the resulting operational mode given two administrative modes. For example, 
A switch port in dynamic desirable mode will form a trunk with an interface in any administrative mode except access. Pause the video here if you want to take a look at this table. Now one more important point. DTP will not form a trunk with a router, PC, etc. The switch port will be in access mode. So if you want to configure router on a stick, for example, you must manually configure the interface connected to the router as a trunk. You cannot put it in dynamic desirable mode and expect it to become a trunk. Let me cover a few more points about DTP. On older switches, switch port mode dynamic desirable is the default administrative mode. They will actively try to form trunk links. However, on newer switches, switch port mode dynamic auto is the default administrative mode. You can disable DTP negotiation on an interface with this command. Switch port no negotiate. If you use this command, the interface will stop sending DTP negotiation frames. By the way, configuring an access port with switch port mode access also disables DTP negotiation on an interface. It will also stop sending DTP frames. If you manually configure an interface in trunk mode, however, it does not stop it from sending DTP frames, unless you also issue the switch port no negotiate command above. As I said before, it is recommended that you disable DTP on all switch ports and manually configure them as access or trunk ports. Now let me talk about trunk encapsulation negotiation. Switches that support both .1Q and ISL trunk encapsulations can use DTP to negotiate the encapsulation they will use. This negotiation is enabled by default, as the default trunk encapsulation mode is switch port trunk encapsulation negotiate. I mentioned this in a previous video on VLANs. If you want to manually configure a trunk interface on a switch that supports both .1Q and ISL, you must first change the encapsulation mode to .1Q or ISL. You can't leave it in negotiate mode. ISL is favored over .1Q, so if both switches support ISL, it will be selected. By the way, the DTP frames that DTP uses to negotiate are sent in VLAN 1 when using ISL, or in the native VLAN when using .1Q. The default native VLAN is VLAN 1, however, so unless you change the native VLAN, they will be sent in VLAN 1 for .1Q also. To show you this negotiation of trunking encapsulation, here is a little more of the output from Show Interfaces Switch Port. I set the interfaces on both switches to dynamic desirable mode so they would form a trunk. Notice that the default trunking encapsulation mode of Negotiate results in an operational trunking encapsulation of ISL. By the way, this field down here, negotiation of trunking, shows whether DTP is enabled, whether the interface is sending DTP frames or not. If the interface is in dynamic desirable, dynamic auto, or trunk mode, this will be on. If it's in access mode, or if you use the switch port no negotiate command I showed you before, this will be off. Okay, that was a good deal of information about DTP. I'm quite sure that you won't need any more information than that for the CCNA when it comes to DTP. If you need extra review, watch the section again, try out the configurations in Packet Tracer yourself, and then try my Packet Tracer Practice Lab, which will be in the next video. Next, let's move on to today's second topic, VTP, VLAN Trunking Protocol. VTP allows you to configure VLANs on a central server switch, and other switches, called VTP clients, will synchronize their VLAN database to the server. It is designed for large networks with many VLANs, so that you don't have to configure each VLAN on every single switch. However, like DTP, it is rarely used, and it is recommended that you do not use it. I will show you one reason why it is recommended that you do not use it later. There are three versions of VTP, 1, 2, and 3. Most modern Cisco switches support all three, but older switches might only support 1 and 2. I will talk about some differences in each version as we go. There are three VTP modes that a switch can operate in, server, client, and transparent. Cisco switches operate in VTP server mode by default. 
Let's talk about the different VTP modes. First up, VTP servers. They can add, modify, and delete VLANs. As I said, Cisco switches operate in VTP server mode by default, so you can modify the VLAN database on Cisco switches by default. They store the VLAN database in non-volatile RAM, also called NVRAM. This means the VLAN database is saved, even if the switch is turned off or reloaded. VTP servers will increase the revision number every time a VLAN is added, modified, or deleted. This revision number is a very important part of VTP. It's what VTP uses to determine the newest version of the VLAN database, the version that the switches will synchronize to. VTP servers will advertise the latest version of the VLAN database on trunk interfaces, and the VTP clients will synchronize their VLAN database to it. So, VTP advertisements aren't sent on access ports, only trunk ports. Here's another important point. VTP servers also function as VTP clients. What does that mean? It means that a VTP server will synchronize to another VTP server with a higher revision number, because the highest revision number is considered the newest, most accurate version of the VLAN database. Now let's talk about VTP clients a little. VTP clients cannot add, modify, or delete VLANs. If you try to add, modify, or delete a VLAN in the CLI, the command will be rejected. VTP clients do not store the VLAN database in NVRAM. However, in the newest VTP version, VTP v3, they do. VTP clients will synchronize their VLAN database to the server with the highest revision number in their VTP domain. I will talk about VTP domains soon. Finally, VTP clients will advertise their VLAN database and forward VLAN advertisements to other clients over their trunk ports. Okay, that's enough information for now. I will talk about the third VTP mode, VTP transparent, later. So let's look at how VTP works. These are four switches, and I've configured all of their interfaces as trunks, so they will send and receive VTP advertisements between each other. Here is the output of a very useful command, show VTP status on switch one. All of these switches have the default configuration, so their output will be mostly the same. Let's look at some of these fields. These fields here show that the switch is capable of running VTP version one, two, or three, but it is running version one at the moment, the default. Notice that there is no domain name. By default, the domain name is null. There is no domain name. If we want VTP to synchronize among these devices, we will need to configure them all with the same VTP domain name. Now look down here. You can see the default VTP operating mode of server. Notice the maximum number of VLANs supported locally is 1005. This is because VTP version one and version two do not support the extended VLAN range of 1006 to 4094. Only version three supports them. So if you want to use the extended VLAN range, you'll need to use VTP version three. The number of existing VLANs is five. Those are the VLANs that exist by default on the switch. One and 1002, three, four, and five. Finally, look at the configuration revision number. It is zero at the moment. If I add, modify, or delete a VLAN, this will increase to one, and switch one will advertise this to VTP clients in the same domain. It will also update its own VLAN database if it receives a VTP advertisement with a higher revision number, because VTP servers function as VTP clients also. So, I use the command VTP domain Cisco to change switch one's VTP domain name to Cisco. I then made a VLAN, VLAN 10, and named it engineering. So because I added a VLAN, if I do show VTP status again, we should see that the revision number has increased. You can now see that the VTP domain name has changed to Cisco, the number of existing VLANs is six, and the revision number has increased to one. Now let's go check on the other switches. Okay, so something interesting has occurred. Without any configuration, switch two has changed its domain name to Cisco and updated its VLAN database to match switch 1's, 
with a revision number of 1. If a switch with no VTP domain, or domain null, receives a VTP advertisement with a VTP domain name, it will automatically join that VTP domain. So, switch2 automatically joined the domain Cisco. As I said before, if a switch receives a VTP advertisement in the same VTP domain with a higher revision number, it will update its VLAN database to match. If I do show VLAN brief on switch2 now, you can see that VLAN 10 with the name engineering was added. Here you can see that the advertisements were passed along to switch3 and switch4 as well, and they joined the domain and updated their VLAN database as well. Since you've seen how VTP sync works, let me introduce one danger of VTP. If you connect an old switch with a higher revision number to your network, and the VTP domain name matches, all switches in the domain will sync their VLAN database to that switch. This could cause all of the hosts on your network to instantly lose connectivity, because the switches could sync to a totally different VLAN database, and the VLANs you are using could disappear. This is one reason why VTP is usually not used in modern networks. Just to demonstrate that, let's say this VTP domain Cisco has a revision of 5 and VLANs 1, 10, 20, 30, and 40. Then you take an old switch your company used to use to add to the network. However, it has a revision number of 50 and VLANs 1, 99, and 220. It will send VTP advertisements with this revision number which will be forwarded throughout the domain. All of these switches will update their VLAN database to match, and all hosts in VLANs 10, 20, 30, and 40 will suddenly lose connectivity. Next, let me talk about VTP transparent mode. Switches in VTP transparent mode do not participate in the VTP domain. They do not sync their VLAN database to the VTP server. VTP transparent mode maintains its own independent VLAN database in NVRAM. It can add, modify, or delete VLANs, but they won't be advertised to other switches. Although it doesn't sync its VLAN database, it will forward VTP advertisements over its trunk ports if the VTP advertisement is in the same domain as it, but it won't advertise its own VLAN database. So let's compare the functionality of server, client, and transparent mode switches. I set switch2 to client mode with the command VTP mode client. Afterward, I tried to create VLAN 20 on the switch, but as you can see, I was rejected because switch2 is now in client mode. Then I set switch3 to transparent mode with VTP mode transparent. Also, to show you that a transparent mode switch won't forward advertisements if it's in a different domain, I changed the domain name to Juniper. So I created VLAN 20, named Sales, on switch 1. And you can see it appears in the output of Show VLAN Brief. Then I did Show VTP Status. And you can see that the configuration revision number is 4. It should be 2, I think, but I made a few other changes as I was trying things out in the lab for this video. Anyway, let's check out switch 2. As you can see, the VTP client switch 2 has indeed added VLAN 20 to its VLAN database. And it now has the same revision number, 4. How about the transparent switch, switch 3? As expected on the transparent switch, switch 3, VLAN 20 was not added. And now it has a revision number of 0. Changing the VTP domain to an unused domain will reset the revision number to 0. Changing the VTP mode to transparent will also reset the revision number to zero. So if you're going to plug an old switch with a high revision number into a network that uses VTP, make sure to reset the revision number with one of these methods first, so it doesn't overwrite your network's VLAN configurations. Now the question is whether switch four will have added VLAN 20 to its VLAN database. Remember, Switch 3 is in transparent mode in a different domain, so it shouldn't forward the VTP advertisements to Switch 4. Indeed, Switch 4 does not have VLAN 20, and it is still on revision number 3. So what can we do to make Switch 3 start forwarding the VTP advertisements to Switch 4? 
if we change the VTP domain on Switch 3 back to Cisco, it should start forwarding advertisements to Switch 4, even though Switch 3 itself won't sync its own VLAN database based on those advertisements. So I changed the VTP domain on Switch 3 back to Cisco. I also created some new VLANs on Switch 1 to increase the revision number and send more advertisements by the way. And now you can see that Switch 3 did indeed forward the advertisements to Switch 4, and Switch 4 synced its VLAN database to Switch 1 and Switch 2. Finally, I'll just talk about VTP version a little bit. To change the VTP version, use the VTP version command. Changing the VTP version increases the revision number, by the way, and advertisements with this new revision number will be sent. Other servers and clients will then sync and start operating in version 2 as well. For example, here is switch 4. It is now running version 2 and has a revision number of 13, just like switch 1. As for the difference between VTP version 1 and version 2, here is a quote directly from Cisco. VTP v2 is not much different than VTP v1. The major difference is that VTP v2 introduces support for token ring VLANs. If you use token ring VLANs, you must enable VTP v2. Otherwise, there is no reason to use VTP v2. Token ring is an old technology, so really, there is no reason to use version 2. As for version 3, it has quite a few differences and new features, but it's certainly beyond the scope of the CCNA, so we'll leave it here. Okay, here's the first slide on VTP again. To be honest, there is still lots more I can talk about regarding VTP, but I will leave it at that for this course. Again, it isn't on the exam topics list, but you may get some basic questions about VTP and its purpose, so I wanted to tell you about some of its functions. If you learn and remember the information I've given you in this video regarding VTP, that should be more than enough for the CCNA exam. Basically, just know the purpose of VTP, the differences between server, client, and transparent mode, know that switches operate in server mode by default, and that servers operate as clients too, and know about revision numbers. If you know all of that, you should be fine. So before moving on to today's quiz, let's review what we covered. We looked at DTP first, which is a protocol that allows Cisco switches to form trunk connections with other Cisco switches without manual configuration. However, it's recommended that you disable this protocol for security purposes. Then we looked at VTP, another Cisco proprietary protocol that allows you to configure VLANs on switches that operate as central VTP servers which then advertise their VLAN database, and VTP client switches sync their database to it. Note that VTP only syncs the VLAN database. You still have to configure the interfaces on each switch separately. For example, switch port, access, VLAN 10, etc. VTP does not automatically assign interfaces to VLANs. Both of these protocols are no longer on the exam topics list, but you should know about them and their basic functions you may get questions about them on the exam. Okay, let's move on to today's quiz. As a bonus, I will also feature one practice question from Boson's XSIM for CCNA, a set of practice exams I highly recommend you get to prepare for your CCNA exam. Check out XSIM via the link in the video description. Okay, let's go to question one of today's quiz. Switch one and switch two are connected, are both new switches, and the connected interfaces are operating as access ports. However, Switch 2's power supply fails, so you temporarily replace Switch 2 with an old spare switch. You reset the configuration before connecting it to Switch 1, but when you connect it, you notice that a trunk is formed between the two switches. What could be the cause? A. Interfaces on old switches default to switch port mode trunk. B. Interfaces on old switches default to switch port mode dynamic desirable. Or C, access ports are a feature of newer switches. Pause the video to think about your answer. The answer is B. Interfaces on old switches default to switch port mode dynamic desirable. 
newer switches default to dynamic auto. So in this case, switch 1's interface is probably in dynamic auto mode, and the old replacement switch's interface is probably in dynamic desirable mode, so they would form a trunk. Let's go to question 2. Switch 1 is connected to switch 2, and switch 2 is connected to switch 3. You want switch 2 to forward switch 1's VLAN database information to switch 3, but you don't want switch 2 to synchronize its VLAN database to switch 1. Which command should you use on switch 2? A. VTP mode transparent. B. VTP transparent mode. C. VLAN mode transparent. Or D. VTP mode client. Pause the video to think about your answer. The answer is A. VTP mode transparent. A switch in VTP transparent mode will forward VTP advertisements, but it won't sync its VLAN database to the VTP server. It also won't advertise its own VLAN database. Let's go to question 3. What are two methods to reset a switch's VTP revision number to zero? Choose two. Each answer is a complete solution. A. Change the VTP domain to an unused domain name. B. Change the switch to VTP server mode. C. Change the switch to VTP transparent mode. Or D. Use the VTP reset command. Pause the video to think about your answer. The answers are A. Change the VTP domain to an unused domain name. And C. Change the switch to VTP transparent mode. Either of these methods will reset the revision number to zero. This is useful if adding a switch with a higher VTP revision number to a network. Okay, now let's go to today's Boson XM question. For today's Boson XM practice question, I've selected not a multiple choice question, but a drag and drop question. So this is about DTP, dynamic trunking protocol. Select the VLAN trunking operational modes from the left, access, trunk, and also misconfig, and drag them to the resulting trunking configuration. So here we have one end of the connection, one switch interface, and then the other switch, the other end, access, dynamic auto, dynamic desirable, or trunk. Okay, so see if you can complete this chart on your own. Pause the video if you want to try it. Okay, so let's walk through the answers. So here on one end of the connection, access mode. Manually configuring a switch port in access mode turns off DTP uh, negotiation. It won't form a trunk port no matter what. So two access ports will result in an operational mode of access. Access and dynamic auto, same thing. So dynamic auto can form a trunk, but it won't actively try to form a trunk unless the other end is trying to form a trunk. So that will be access. Access and dynamic desirable, although this end is trying to form a trunk, this end will not. So that is access. Now access and trunk, that is a misconfig. Do not do this in a real network. You can try it out in a lab to see what happens, but do not do it in a real network. You will encounter problems. Dynamic auto and access. Well, we just saw that here. That will be an access port. Dynamic auto and dynamic auto. Neither is actively trying to form a trunk, so that will be access. Dynamic auto and dynamic desirable. This end is actively trying to form a trunk, so they will form a trunk. Same thing, dynamic auto and trunk will form a trunk. Even if you manually configure a switch port mode trunk, DTP is still running, and this end will actively try to form a trunk with the other end. And since it is dynamic auto, they will form a trunk. Okay, dynamic desirable and access, that will result in access. This end will refuse to become a trunk. Dynamic desirable and dynamic auto, that will form a trunk. Two dynamic desirables definitely form a trunk. And this one as well, trunk. Okay, next moving on to trunk on this end. Trunk and access, again, that is a misconfig. Don't do this in a real network. Trunk and dynamic auto will form a trunk. 
trunk and dynamic desirable, of course. And, of course, trunk and trunk also will form a trunk. So once you've finished, click on Done. And then click on Show Answer. Now, if you don't want to check the answer yet, you can click on Next to go to the next question in the practice exam. But let's see if I got the correct answer. And I did. Okay, here is Boson's explanation. You can read it if you want. And there are also references here. The Official Cert Guide by Wendell Odom, Volume 1, Chapter 8, Implementing Ethernet VLANs, and some additional reading from Cisco. I will link some reading from Cisco in the video description, by the way. And this category shows which category of the exam topics list this question is from. This is from the Network Access category. Okay, so that's today's XSIM practice question. If you want to get a copy of XSIM for yourself, and I highly recommend you do, they are fantastic practice exams, please follow the link in the video description. There will be supplementary materials for this video. There will be a review flashcard deck to use with the software Anki. Download the deck from the link in the description. There will also be a Packet Tracer practice lab to help you practice the configurations from this video. That will be in a separate video. Before finishing today's video, I want to thank my JCNP level channel members. Thank you to Samil, Velvajekum, C Mode, Johan, Mark, Alexa, Miguel, Yusuf, Boson Software, the creators of XSIM, by the way, CD, Magrathia, Devin, Chalzetta, Lito, Jonathan, Mike, Alexander, and Vance. Sorry if I pronounced your name incorrectly, but thank you so much for your support. One of you is displaying as channel failed to load. If this is you, please let me know and I'll see if YouTube can fix it. This is the list of JCNP level members at the time of recording, by the way. If you signed up recently and your name isn't on here, don't worry. You'll definitely be in the next video. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to the channel, like the video, leave a comment, and share the video with anyone else studying for the CCNA. If you want to leave a tip, check the links in the description. I'm also a Brave verified publisher and accept BAT or basic attention token tips via the Brave browser. That's all for now.